So I once worked on this project which used loosely coupled microservices as an architecture pattern. We had close to 10 services handling something specific each for the application. Now, while it ran great in production, of course, because we deployed it using Kubernetes, it came with its set of challenges during local development. Like, oh my gosh, it was a nightmare. Do you know how long it took for me to get each one of those services up and running to debug anything locally? Like, every single time. And this is just 10 services. Imagine how it will be if you had like maybe 100 services. So today we'll talk about how you can use Scaffold to ease local development while working with Kubernetes. Hi, my name is Chika Ophili and this is Dev on Devs in production. So in case you didn't know, Scaffold is an open source project from Google that handles building, pushing, and deploying your dockerized applications, allowing you, the developer, to focus on what really matters the most. Being great. <laughs> well, of course, I'm writing code, you know, writing code. <laughs> and here's the beautiful thing. You can develop locally using a remote Kubernetes cluster. Yep, you heard me right. So you don't actually need a local Kubernetes cluster like, say, uh, Minikube or the Kubernetes that comes with Docker for Mac or whatever flavor it is that you like to develop or debug with. You do need Docker though if you intend to build those Docker images locally. Otherwise, you can use something like, say, Google Cloud Build. Now, all you have to do is point your local scaffold configuration to the remote cluster. That way, scaffold will use the remote cluster resources to build using Google Doc, um, Cloud Build or your local Docker instance and push those images and deploy them. Now, some devs will ask me, say, hey, Chuka, does that mean that I have to redeploy my app every single time I make changes? Well, the answer is no. See, Scaffold is highly optimized. It allows you to sync your local app folders to remote container folders while watching them in real time, giving you instant feedback while you're developing. Think of it like a hot reloading in, um, you know how React or React Native app comes shipped with or built in. Now, all you, do, you need to do is install the CLI tool. There's nothing you do need to install on the server side. There's nothing that needs to go to any of your cluster servers. So I'm going to show a very quick demo of how Scaffold works. And I've created a sample repository adapted from Google Cloud Code examples. It's got two services, one front end, one back end, and a simple Scaffold config. Now, you can visit https scaffold.dev for instructions on how to install it. Let's jump into the demo. I have my uh, folder, uh, my repository set up here locally, and I just want to quickly run through some files, okay? Now, notice this is a mono repo with two uh, uh, services, one back end and one front end, and here is the scaffold folder. My application source is in the source or uh, SRC folder. Um, the important files one needs to um, uh, make sure it's available for scaffold to work completely is the docker files right in each of the folders the scaffold file itself and finally a folder where you have your kubernetes manifest as you can see i have mine in uh, k8 uh, subfolder and that's where all the manifests uh, lie for the three services so i have a mongo database service i have a back-end express service and i have a front-end express service okay now let's quickly examine in, in like a 10 seconds the scaffold file. Now, it, it, it's a very basic file. What you see is three sections. We have the build section, we have the deploy section, and then we have the profile section. The build essentially tells or instructs scaffold how to build and sync these files to your environment. So I've got two services as I've shown, um, and I use the context key to tell scaffold where to find the docker file so i'm telling scaffold hey build this docker file that it's in the source uh, folder with the, the back end folder in the source directory and name it node.js guestbook backend and do the same thing for the front end now if you notice just under context we have lines 11 to 13 that says sync all the files in this local uh, source directory uh, for backend and sync it into the Docker container for the Kubernetes uh, cluster. And it will do the same thing for the front end. And that's how Scaffold keeps track of matching the local files to wherever 
they are deployed in whatever containers remotely. Uh, and then deploy is a simple and straightforward, just telling Scaffold where to find the deployment manifests. If I were to go into K8 folder and I run kubectl apply, this would set up the service in the cluster. And then finally, we will get to see this later. This is a profile that says, hey, use cloud build. So in case I don't want to use my local uh, Kubernetes cluster or my local Docker instance to do the building, I can tell Scaffold to use the cloud build resources or, you know, or Maven or Jip, whatever uh, custom scripts that you may have. If you check the Scaffold reference, there is information on how to use the different types of builds. You could use Canical, but I'm using cloud build with a Canical cache, as you can see. And if you notice, I still have the same settings and the same setup that I have for my local builds uh, or for the same profile. And it's essentially the same thing. The only difference here is I'm using cloud build um, as my build engine, but the tag policy will override the profile tag policy because it's not defined here. So anything that you don't define in your main config, um, it, you know, or anything that you don't define in your profile, it would default to whatever is in your main uh, config. Profiles are a good way to segment uh, the deployment types. So like, for example, uh, dev, staging, production, and so on and so forth. Okay, so we're going to try and do a quick build using a local Kubernetes cluster. Now, I have my cluster set up and I'm just going to do a quick get to make sure that this is the local cluster. And all I have to do is run scaffold dev port forward. All right, now it's going to build my local, um, what scaffold is doing right now, it's actually using my local Docker instance and it's sending the Docker build. Um, and then it's going to deploy it once the Docker build is up uh, and ready to go. As you can see, everything's up and running. Now you can see the application right here. It's uh, on port 45. Uh, or three, you can check the service files to see, uh, you know, what's specified there. Now, the beautiful thing is scaffold will tail the logs. Uh, so it will connect straight to the Docker instance or connect straight to the Kubernetes instance, and then actually pipe and tail the logs straight to your CLI. So you can see everything that's going on right now. I'm going to just test to make sure the application works. And as you can see, the logs reflect everything that's going on. So a beautiful, a, a good thing to do also would be, let's say we wanted to do a quick change, you know, um, maybe we wanted to quickly update, uh, text, you know, and we wanted to do that without rebuilding, uh, or restarting the whole, um, application. I'm just going to make a change here and right. Now I'm just going to refresh this. And as you can see, already now scaffold didn't have to redeploy the whole application the only time scaffold would most likely redeploy and rebuild the application is in my own case i'm using node.js and i make changes to the package.json file that it will need to rebuild maybe their new dependencies or what have you but for other applications like maybe python or php it won't need to do a full rebuild except for example in python you add files to your requirements folder all right now um I'm going to kill this server now. Now, let's say I wanted to run this. I just wanted to run this without, you know, tailing the logs. I actually wanted it to deploy. Instead of using scaffold dev, I would use scaffold run. And scaffold will do exactly the same thing. But here the difference is scaffold will not um, connect and tail. And once I press a control C, it wouldn't kill the application. So this is actually a deployment. This is actually a deployment. Um, and notice that I didn't you know, f forward the ports because this is not a development environment. So I would have to go to wherever you know the, the deployments are. So let's check, make sure that the deployments are there. As you can see, everything is running and everything is good. So imagine my local instance was my server and everything was all set up, then we'll be good to go. And if I also wanted to delete that running instance, all I have to do is go to where the scaffold folder is and just type scaffold delete and it will clean everything up. It will delete everything that it deployed, including the services, and we are good to go. Okay. So now let's run using our remote uh, uh, container engine. I have a container engine cluster set up. I'm just going to switch to that right now. 
um, and then I'm just going to check to make sure that I am using my remote cluster. All right. So now we're going to run the same code. The only difference is I need to tell scaffold some certain things. The first is I need to tell scaffold in this case, I want to use cloud build. Now I can also use my local Docker instance. I can get staff scaffold to use my local Docker instance and push it to the cloud. And then scaffold will use the one in the cloud to deploy. Or if I don't have enough resources to build it locally, I can tell scaffold, Hey, use cloud build, which is in the cloud. I already have, I've already shown you the configuration back, uh, you know, in a, a couple minutes ago. So now all I'm telling scaffold is, Hey, use cloud build and push the image to my repo, which is in gcr.io. So all right, and I want scaffold to, as usual, forward all the ports that are available to my local machine. Oh, I think I made a mistake there. There we go. <laughs> okay. Now what scaffold is going to do, scaffold is going to, uh, send my code all the way to cloud build. It will push cloud will will build that, uh, container and then it will deploy, um, um, you know, the code, as you can see, this is all cloud cloud build. Uh, I'm using cloud build with my mechanical cache to get everything up and running speedily. Okay. So, so I'm just going to speed this up. We have our application up and running. As you can see, uh, this is the application, but now it's running in my cluster. Okay. Just going to test to make sure everything works. Okay. And just like as if it was a local build, if I removed and say hello remote and I save this and I switch back, I do a refresh. You can see that scaffold has already synced my folder internally without doing a restart. And that pretty much wraps this up. Thanks guys for tuning in. I hope you learned something. Now don't forget to hit subscribe and like if you like this video. Uh, in the next video, we'll be taking a look at how to debug your applications using Scaffold and VS Code. Till next time, ciao.